So let's talk speed density. Um, what you want to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it, all the aboves, and let's go into the tuning side of it. Now I already have the car switched over to speed density, or at least uh, I guess you would say like the first step to getting the speed density started, and uh, some part of the maps um, ready to go. So I kind of did that ahead of time so that I could be ready to give you guys the information that you need, um, at least that the start of it. So let's go over a few things. Uh, we're going to start with the car. Um, it's the important part that you have the car ready for speed density because you can tune as much as you want, but if the car is not ready, it's not going to work. So we're going to go over the parts, um, some of the options, some of the uh, uh, gauges and things. Alright, so we'll start with the obvious here. Um, first thing that you're going to really need to do to go speed density is have an uh, air intake temperature IAT sensor. Um, this is the MAF here and the one that comes on the car is built into the MAF sensor. So you have, uh, at least on the 2006 um, era, the GD era, it will be built into the MAF sensor. And if you can see this thing is right into the intake. So you cannot use this sensor because the air that goes through the sensor is pre-intercooler. So it's actually hot air coming in from the outside, but we, as an, using uh, speed density, you want to know the temperature pretty much right before it. I mean, you want to know the actual temperature of the combustion chamber, but you're not going to be able to do that. So the closest you can get is getting the air right into the um, intake. Now you don't, from what I understand, from my read, understanding and, and looking at online, you do not want to put the uh, IAT sensor in your actual manifold. This thing can get heat soaked and uh, mess with the temperature changes. So that's one thing I would definitely advise against. Now, um, I did sell my old, let me see if I got this got here. There's some old parts here. Get this out of the way. So if you're looking at a, a stock intercooler, or you're looking at uh, an aftermarket intercooler, for a top mount at least, this is a few options that I suggest. Um, in the STI one, there really isn't much room. This is the bottom part of it. So some people tap and drill into this area here. Um, if you're using the coupler, you can actually get a bong that fits into, let me see, I might have a piece over here. I can just use it as, as an example on my hoses. So if you have this guy here, you might be able to, uh, if this tracking will stop working, you might be able to put a uh, bung into this a uh, coupler here and then grab the temperature there if you're desperate enough that you need to do that um, that's one option to, to kind of get you started because of how close this is to the throttle body but um, by this point when you're going speed density you probably should have a reason to do it and in this case you might have already switched to a front mount intercooler uh, to get the most benefit so at that point um, you're already hitting a horsepower goal or a temperature goal or something that requires that so speed density would probably be along the lines of something you would jump to so in my case down here this is a good old focus this is an ETS intercooler setup they provide an IET bung down there so I screw in basically a, I think it's a GM go fast like a, a, a go fast it's a GM um, fast response uh, that you can pick up plug that guy in uh, and then basically what you do My ghetto version. I haven't really cleaned up much, but you just splice into the two wires um, This I'll post a link for Cobb's guide. They'll actually tell you the detail how to do this you splice in two wires and You leave the two other wires down here exposed in case you need to put those back together Now you can buy a kit for that, so if you if you didn't want to do any splicing into your MAF sensor, you can buy a kit. Um, I can't think of the name right offhand that does it. There's two companies I know that make kits for it. Um, in my case, I didn't want to spend the money, so I did it myself. So IET sensor, number one thing that you need. All right, so the next thing that you'll need is the uh, most likely a MAP sensor, um, the stock one in uh, the pre-2008 cars all came with I believe like a three bar map sensor 
which is good for like 22 to 23 pounds. And then I believe the uh, 2008 and above STIs had a 3.5 map sensor, which is good to about 28 pounds. So that's one thing you do want to upgrade. It'll be uh, this guy here, right here on the throttle body. In my case, I just purchased a um, I just purchased a Cobb um, four bar, which is good to like 30 or something, 38 pounds, which is plenty for what I what I plan to run for now. And uh, that'll get you covered there. So those two components that you'll need: IET sensor and a map sensor. And then you calibrate those based on the manufacturer settings. And then when we get in the car, um, really don't need too much in here as far as uh, gauges go. I mean, you obviously you'll need your, um, your AFR gauge here. Um, and I'll take the keys out because the beeping is annoying. And that's pretty much it. And then a setup, obviously, to do your tuning. So with those two components there, we can get started with um, putting every other pieces together for the tuning. So let's go ahead and uh, get inside and I'll go over the actual Cobb access tuner setup and uh, show you some of the first steps that I did. Let's go over the uh, Cobb access tuner and uh, the Subaru speed density guide. Uh, this will be pretty much everything to get you started on switching your car from MAF sensor to a speed density tune. Um, so let's get into it. Um, just remember this guide covers the 2025 and direct index engine. So when you're looking through the guide, you're reading information, you make sure that uh, pertains to your specific engine. <clears throat> so this guide itself covers speed density. Um, just know that Cobb Tuning's website here covers multiple things um, on the side as well. So it's good information to scroll through and look through to kind of cover everything about the actual software. So speed density. Um, read through this thing. It's like a Bible per se. It's a guideline to follow. Good information. Um, and then hopefully what I'm teaching you here and what you can learn on yourself on the um, outside of this will uh, get you ready for the speed density. Um, but this guy it's a good starting point to get everything you need into it. So let's start with uh, a few different pieces of things I want to touch on. The first one being the map sensor. So like I said previously you need a map sensor for your car. Uh, pick one of these ones that's recommended by Cobb, AM, GM, uh, Cobb, and Omnipower. This is the one I currently have. No special reason why I chose it. It was just the best price um, at the time, so I, I went with this one, plus a four bar is good enough for now. So when you pick one, make sure you adjust your tune um, appropriately with the proper calibration. If you read through this, it'll tell you that. Uh, but you need to make the adjustment because you have a whole different map sensor. Uh, so make sure to make that adjustment there. Uh, and then the last thing is the air fuel, or the IET, sorry, the, the AET sensor. Um, make sure you uh, purchase one, and I'll show you that one in a second for the recommended one. This is how to wire it in if you're going to do it yourself. So uh, if you don't want to buy the adapter kit, which I'll show you that as well, um, this is actually the wires you need to take a look at so that you can splice it in. So let's see. First thing, uh, the IET sensor, in this case um, GM fast response, is definitely the one that I recommend. Uh, I went through the internet, scoured it, did some searching through you know, all the, the Corvette forms and all these different American cars, um, SRT forms, Evo forms, to kind of see what those guys were using. And this seems to be the main one that everybody uses, especially for speed density just because that term fast response, it, it supposedly is really fast for keeping up on the change of the temperature. Just make sure it's the one that uh, has that whitish, light gray um, tip that you plug in, and then it's an open air like you see here in the, in the black the side. Make sure it's open air so that uh, it can change the temperature fast enough. Uh, and then of course the thread type, um, just make sure that's a thing whenever you're threading into or wherever you tap into. And then for that, you have the uh, adapter. So iWire Services pretty much does all Subaru wiring. Uh, I purchased a few things through them and they've done really well. Um, they make wiring harnesses and such for a bunch of cars. <coughs> but uh, if you do want to have the adapter and you don't want to splice wires into your car and do all the extra work, you can pick it up for 100 bucks. Again, you know, you, you, you purchase this. Um, maybe a little extra wire from e from Amazon as well so that you can wire it in and 
you're maybe 30 bucks in versus this harness, but this is very convenient, so something to look out for. And then of course, good old ROM Raider. Make sure you uh, keep this place bookmarked. We have lots of information uh, regarding tuning. Uh, may not apply to the access tuner, but the knowledge is there. Uh, I don't think there's too much on speed density. Uh, there's some stuff there, but uh, just still, nonetheless, there's, there's a lot of information. So, all right, so once you load up the access tuner software here, um, you're going to want to choose the Cobb V3 or whatever version you're on, the custom uh, features. So make sure the CCF version is selected. You're going to open it up. It's going to tell you that your ROM is using older feature. That's because my ROM's already loaded. But this will be the same thing if you went file and open. Uh, things were changed. It's going to light thing, highlight things in bold, which is fine. So uh, let's go through a few of the tables that have changed. And then we'll go through the actual um, speed density itself. So under the sensor calibrations, um, you're going to see that the map sensor voltage has changed. In this case, for me it changed. Um, this was that map sensor I told you to calibrate earlier when I was looking at the guide itself. Mine is supposed to be 8, which is fine. Just make sure you update that if that has been changed from your map sensor calibration beforehand. Just update it again once you've gone to the speed density tune. Uh, under the limiters, your basically your load uh, limit has been up a huge amount. You can pretty much ignore that. It's just a an upper limit, and the map sensor as well has been set to 2,000, which you probably won't ever hit. So you can ignore that as well. Uh, boost control table shows the same thing as the map sensor here, and then we'll jump straight to the cob. We're not touching flex fuel, fuel pressure, or the boost per gear, or boost per wastegate, which are some cool things you can you can mess with. But you can custom the customize the sensor inputs. In this case, the uh, if you want to add in like an air fuel ratio, that's data logged directly to the software instead of through a separate USB connection on your laptop. You can uh, use a TVG delete. In my case, is what I'm going to be doing here soon, and plug in the information here, and then you can log directly to the Access Tuner. There's plenty of guides online. You can just search for that um, on the internet. So speed density. Uh, let's talk about the first few things that you're going to do when you actually get this all loaded up. So activation feature, go ahead and enable it. It's not going to work until you actually enable it. Set this to 1, it tells the car that you want to use speed density and then it's activated to be used. So go ahead and enable that, set it and forget it. The next table is the speed density mode. Now this is what actually flips the switch. Um, the other one kind of primed it, this one actually flips the switch. And this is where you choose the mode you want to run in. So for the very beginning, first time you flash the car, you want to set this to zero. Because in zero, you're under the MAF sensor. Uh, MAF sensor, sorry, MAF, the MAF sensor. And when you're running under that, your car has already been tuned for it. That's the whole reason why you're watching this video most likely, because you haven't gone to speed density yet, or you're planning on it. So when you flash the car, you want to be in the MAF mode. And because this has an R here, you can actually real-time tune it. I'm losing my voice trying to make this video so many times. So because it has an R here, you can actually make that change uh, live to the car. So that's what we'll do when we're actually tuning. Um, in this case, we're going to set this to 2 once the car is connected. And we'll enable that hybrid mode. Uh, next few tables, uh, these compensation tables I'm not going to go into too much because these are going to be something you do on the final end of the tune when you're actually finalizing and uh, doing that 1% or 2% difference in fuel. <coughs> You'll make those changes here. Uh, some guys, depending on the temperatures and stuff, you may have to make more aggressive changes with this, whether it's zeroing them out or increasing or lowering them. Because uh, as you're tuning, you have to remember that these adjustments will always take into play as well. So uh, activation's good. Uh, the next thing we'll worry about is the actual hybrid mode. So what is it doing during hybrid mode? So in hybrid mode, basically, uh, the car is going to do a switch from the MAF sensor to the MAP sensor. And it's going to do it through a blend. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an idea what that means. So you have four different ways you can actually do that trigger effect to go from MAF to speed density. Uh, first one being the MAF sensor. Uh, second one being the MAP MAP sensor, you can do it based on RPM or by throttle position. So the MAP sensor, basically you tell the car what voltage you want this to actually make this trigger to happen. Whether it's 4 volts or 3.89 volts, you can make that decision there. Uh, the MAP sensor, what, which I personally use, this is basically how much pressure the um, MAP sensor is actually reading. 
In this case, it's absolute pressure, not relative pressure, which is actual boost itself, like your uh, your vacuum and your boost from your turbo. So remember, you keep that dip, keep that uh, those separate. Uh, in my case, I actually set this to 30, which is about 15 pounds of boost for me. So that's when I do my trigger. Now RPM and TPS, I don't really recommend initially. Um, this is not a professional opinion. This is my opinion. Uh, RPM can be dependent in the sense of if you choose 4,000 RPM, well, you can be in 4,000 RPM in sixth gear. You may not want to switch over to speed density if, that, if that's the case. Same with throttle position. You may be in first gear, third gear, or sixth gear, and if throttle is up to 50% to make that switch, you may not want to add or remove fuel because of this change over to speed density um, and, and, and you know have too much or too less fuel. <coughs> so keep an eye on that. Um, in my case, I'd say go with the map sensor, but it's up to you, and uh, make that change. Now, the cool thing about this is the blending mode. It actually blends very efficiently. Um, in this case, my trigger at 15 pounds, and then it blends to whatever, 16 pounds. So you have actually some play in that blend mode. And what does that is a mixture, and what does that blend is um, a mixture of the hysterias, the um, and the ramping adders here. These kind of do those triggers on when you want that that blend mode to start and how aggressive it needs to be. So you'll be playing with those tables to kind of fine tune them. So how do you how do you start? Um, you got your everything dialed in, simple stuff. You're ready to go to speed density. You got this table and they're filled out with hundreds. You're like, I don't know what to do with a bunch of hundreds. Um, some of these tables here might actually be 50. Some of these tables here might actually be 101. It's, it's hard to say, but where do you start, right? You don't know what your car needs. You could technically enable this, turn your car on, and see what happens, and make adjustments as you go, but that's too much trial and error. So Cobb, being the smart people they are, they went and created um, a data log that you can do that will take the MAF sensor, I keep saying it wrong, the MAF sensor, M-A-F, and do a calculation to convert it to VE, biomedic efficiency. And that table or that data log you want to do is the SDVE estimated. So with you being in the um, hybrid mode of zero in the math sensor, uh, you go around data logging this guy here. And once you get an hour's worth or two hours worth of driving, in this case, I'm using it for 15 pounds of boost and higher. So I need to be in a lot of poles, a lot of wide open throttle. So I went out and got about 20 poles or so different driving conditions, different situations, and uh, took that information, put it in Excel, and pulled it all out, and I made a table. And that's in that, the second video I, I put out, we'll have that detail on that. But that's something you'll need to do. You'll go through this guide from Cobb, and it tells you how to log, what you need to log, um, and whatnot. You bring that information back, you put it through Excel. <coughs> in my case, I used a pivot table to do it all. And then uh, you'll take that information, you'll apply it here, and you'll go out and see what you did. Now, uh, obviously, having an AFR gauge is a necessity here, because as soon as you see something out of whack, you need to stop what you're doing and get it fixed. Because this table is it has an R in it, and you can real-time tune it, you can make those changes as you need to. So, quick video here, just want to cover the basis, go over the information, tell you how to make that change, how to make that first flash, how to kind of get started with the first drive, I don't suggest you flash this and go out and drive based on your first thing, but get an idea. Log, log, log that, that table or that uh, data log. Get as much information as you can. Make the best estimated guess and then go out there and, and do a quick poll, few polls with those other, other recommended tables that you are recommended logs and then make sure the data is good. And if you see anything bad with the AFR, stop what you're doing. There's no reason to hurt your engine. Switch back to the math sensor and get yourself home and figure out what you got to do to make those changes. Uh, so we'll go deeper into this as I do this because I'm going to try and make the videos this as I'm doing the tuning and uh, keep you updated.